so Sue is um, a, a software developer at in this, um, Tony Burdett's group at the EBI. Over to you. Uh, thanks, Nikki. And uh, you can see my screen. Yes. Okay, thanks. Uh, so today I'm going to speak about text mining tools for cleaning uh, cohort data. And in this session, what we'll do is uh, we will uh, try to clean and annotate UK Biobank synthetic data uh, that we have generated as a part of Seneca project. And uh, this is uh, more of a technical uh, session compared to other sessions. Uh, so if you have any questions or need more details, please feel free to interrupt me. So tools, uh, we are going to use a Python programming language uh, because uh, it's very easy to learn and understand and also has a lot of tools in text mining and machine learning uh, area. And we're going to use a Jupyter notebook, which is uh, a web-based uh, computational environment where you can uh, uh, specify both your documentation and code in the same place, and also a very good uh, learning, uh, learning and experimental tool. And also, uh, we will use Google Colab, which is a hosted Jupyter Notebook in cloud, and it's free. And uh, on top of Jupyter Notebook, it also has uh, some other features, such as uh, if you want to run parallel loads, you can use uh, Google GPUs. And the most important thing is uh, by using Google Colab, you don't have to configure Python or Jupyter Notebook in your local machine. You just uh, need to open the browser and uh, start coding and trying it out. And here is, uh, if you access this slide, you can find the links for Colab Notebook and also GitHub repository and also a resource directory in Google Drive where you can find a data set uh, that we use, we are using for this session. And uh, moving uh, to Google Colab. So this is a Jupyter Notebook in uh, Colab. Uh, here, I'm not gonna uh, use this one. Instead, I'm going to use uh, the Jupyter Notebook, uh, which is running on my local machine because uh, it's, uh, the interface is a little bit uh, more clearer in a uh, local Jupyter Notebook, uh, but a bit of introduction to this uh, Google Colab. Uh, one important thing uh, about Google Colab is that you can uh, directly connect your Google Drive with the Colab, and uh, then uh, you can refer to files and so on. So here I have this, uh, all these resources in uh, Google Drive directory, and uh, this is the Colab or notebook file. And also we have our synthetic data file here, which is a comma separated uh, value file. And uh, here we have a code to connect our uh, uh, Colab uh, with Google Drive. So probably you have to uh, copy this. Uh, if you want to run this, uh, run this and check it out, uh, you have to copy this uh, directly to your local uh, Google Drive and uh, try it. So if you run this command, it will authenticate uh, your Google Drive uh, with, uh, with the Colab. And uh, also when you're running, you might have to change this path because uh, it's a path uh, to my Google Drive uh, where this uh, data is at. You can also uh, browse your Google Drive here and uh, just copy path uh, to, uh, to the file that you want to uh, link with. And now I'm going to move into Jupyter Notebook environment in my local machine. So this uh, notebook, uh, we are uh, talking about uh, basics of uh, data cleaning and annotation. And uh, I'm going to use uh, some of the methods uh, Catherine mentioned in the previous talk. Uh, so our idea, uh, so what we'll do is we will first explore data and then we, uh, then we will try to uh, normalize some fields, and uh, remove some of the encodings. Then we'll try to do some spelling correction. And finally, we'll try to do try to annotate uh, data with ontologies. Uh, so a uh, bit about the data set that we're using. So the, the data set we are using is UK Biobank synthetic data that we have generated uh, for Seneca project. Uh, you can also find this data set at EBI Biosamples and EGA archives. Uh, and uh, the, UK Biobank data and also synthetic data 
uh, of Seneca are quite clean, but for this analysis, we needed a bit, uh, that data set. Therefore, I introduced some errors uh, into this data set. So uh, the first part of any data cleaning or analyzing task is exploring data and understanding data. So what I'm going to do is first load this uh, data set into memory and uh, check the shape of it and uh, check some fields. Uh, I'm going to use uh, Python pandas package for this. It's a very versatile package for dealing with data. And uh, we can easily read CSV data into Python uh, data structure. We call it, uh, it's like a table. We call it Python data, uh, pandas data frame. And sorry, is, it, sorry, can you make, make the screen a little bit bigger, maybe? Oh, yeah, so A little bit zoom in, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, this, thank you. Yeah, uh, perfect, okay. thanks. And uh, so we call it a data frame. And if we look this code and you can uh, run it and see the results uh, right in the notebook itself. And uh, so what I have done is, uh, Load, loaded this uh, CSV data into uh, Pandas data frame. And also if I see uh, the shape of this data, it has uh, 2,500, uh, more than 2,500 rows and uh, 81 columns. And also uh, this one shows, this command, the head command shows first five rows uh, of our data set. I'm gonna just, uh, Go and see a little bit into data set that we have. So this is the data set we have. And uh, the first first uh, row is the column, column headers. And we have a couple of uh, identifiers at the start. And also we have some numerical values in this data set. And also we have uh, text values and categorical values. And uh, if you check uh, the, some of the fields have this uh, zero dot zero at the end of it, end of the field and some missing values uh, and so on. Moving back again. So we can also uh, like visualize uh, this in our notebook itself. So each of the each of these uh, column represent a field in our data set and uh, the rows are the number of uh, the data points. Uh, for this analysis, I'm going to ignore the ID fields and I'm also not gonna focus very much uh, on uh, numerical fields. Uh, I'm gonna focus uh, mostly on uh, text values. Uh, just before uh, doing any data cleaning task, let me uh, go and check some of the distribution. Uh, yeah, let me know what do. Okay. This is what we have now. And uh, so I'm going to use a Python floating library uh, to float uh, one of the numerical fields in this data set, uh, the weight, and also I'm gonna use uh, this uh, on my data frame, this describe command, which uh, shows some uh, statistics about uh, the column. If I execute that, uh, the histogram, we can see uh, that it's mostly a normal distribution, and also uh, we have minimum value of 20, and max value, and also mean, and so on. And if I go and uh, try out, check some of uh, the text fields. So first I'm gonna uh, check unique values uh, for tobacco smoking. And here you, we can see uh, it has a uh, few unique values uh, for tobacco smoking. And if you check the values, uh, they look uh, very clean and we don't see any uh, dirty data there. And uh, if we check uh, the field six and the unique values, uh, what we can see is uh, one and zero. So we can see this field is encoded instead of uh, text values. And I'm gonna check another field, uh, another system disorder uh, and check unique values. I can see it has a 
sort of uniquely. An interesting thing about this field is like uh, it contains uh, uh, spelling mistakes, uh, a lot of spelling mistakes. And so this is he's just showing it as a list. Uh, nice thing about Jupyter Notebook is if you wrap uh, some of your list or data structure around the pandas data frame, you can uh, like visualize it as a table, nice table, which, uh, which is uh, easy to understand. Okay, after this uh, visualization, now I'm gonna do uh, our first uh, cleaning tasks. So uh, uh, you saw that uh, some of our data set contained uh, this uh, uh, fields contained this uh, zero, point zero uh, at the end of the fields. This is because UK Biobank uh, has some longitudinal data taken at different time points. Uh, but in our data set, we are only considering one time point data. Therefore, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this uh, uh, 0, 0.0 and I'm also uh, going to remove if there are any uh, trailing or leading white spaces. And also I'm gonna uh, turn this field uh, in, uh, into lowercase. And another thing I'm going to do while that is uh, we have a lot of uh, ID fields, which is not very useful at the moment for now. I'm going to keep only one ID, one field where you can, we can identify each row uniquely and then uh, remove others. So here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm using a Python uh, regex package just to substitute uh, this uh, string. Uh, with an empty string so we can get rid of it and also uh, uh, stripping uh, leading and trailing uh, spaces and also turning everything into a lowercase and also i'm going to drop uh, these id fields and if, uh, after that so previously we had some 80 rows and now we have 77 uh, columns uh, we have uh, now this uh, CMCL columns. Uh, this is, these are the column fields uh, which we have now. And uh, after that, uh, let's uh, go and explore some of the variables. So I'm coming back to the field six. And uh, so we saw that it, is, it has encoded values zero and one. Luckily, for this field, we know what this encoding means. Uh, so in this data set, zero means female and one means male. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I will just simply uh, from uh, this data set, uh, replace all zeros with female in this field and all ones with male. Uh, so pandas has uh, this nice uh, method map that you can uh, specify your mapping and then uh, it will uh, just uh, to map all of your data into the field that you have specified. And after that, I am just uh, checking what are the unique values uh, for the field, for this field uh, we have in this data set. And we can see it's uh, now only we have uh, male and female instead of zero and one. And uh, don't worry about this. Uh, this is just uh, the index of uh, the table. And now we have uh, converted uh, this encode. We have uh, transformed this encoding into text values. Uh, now we're going to check uh, this uh, another field, ethnic background. So it's an interesting field. And if we check uh, number of unique values for this uh, field, we have 147 unique values for ethnic background. Uh, that's a little bit too much. Uh, than we expected. So if we if we go to the data set and check, we can see there are a lot of spelling errors in this field. Uh, there are a few things uh, we can do uh, to get rid of the spelling errors. First one is, uh, let's say we know the list of values uh, that we are expecting for a field. Uh, then what we can do is we can use some kind of a string similarity uh, algorithm uh, to check our field and the list of known fields and to see which field our field matches uh, most. 
we can do that. And if we do not have a list of fields, uh, we can use a dictionary and uh, do some dictionary mapping uh, and see uh, if our uh, field matches with any dictionary world, uh, or we can uh, correct if it matches uh, with any of them. Uh, so for that, uh, Python has, uh, Python NLTK has uh, English dictionary, and uh, we can uh, implement the spell checking, correcting algorithm over it, or there are other Python packages like uh, sim spell file, uh, where we can use uh, for uh, spell correction. And uh, also, uh, so if we use generic dictionary, sometimes uh, our terms might not be in there because uh, they are very, very specific. Uh, for that, we can uh, also augment our dictionary with some domain specific words taken from other uh, other places, maybe from or from an anthology, or maybe there are many other places such as such as PubMed or uh, you know PMC, which have like very domain specific uh, opera. And uh, the first task here is I'm going. I have a list of uh, ethnic uh, list of values uh, for ethnic background, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, unique values in our data frame, in our data set, and uh, go to each of them and try to match uh, each of them with the correct value. And uh, from this, I'm going to select the most uh, most matched value. So it's uh, just here, I'm not going to go to each of the code. And if I execute that, so I can see, so this field is uh, the values from our data set, and uh, this field is uh, the best match value from uh, from the list that we have in our hand, and this is the ratio of matching. You can see uh, we have uh, some spelling mistakes, and uh, this uh, string matching uh, matching algorithm can easily uh, find out uh, the most suitable uh, term that's matching uh, with our term. And for that, I use uh, Python SQL statement, which is uh, just a simple uh, algorithm uh, to see uh, the similarity between two words or two phrases. And after finding a uh, best match for each of the term, what I can do is I can use the same map function that I used before uh, to map each of these terms uh, with the correct term. And you see, previously we had uh, 147 unique values uh, for ethnic background. After after mapping them, we can see if we check again the unique values for ethnic background, uh, it's mapped nicely. And we have now only 21 unique fields. Uh, and if we just uh, go them manually, uh, they all look just fine. And uh, next, what I'm going to do is uh, I will uh, I will use a generic dictionary uh, to map uh, this uh, blood and certain immune disorders values, and uh, to find out uh, what are the spelling mistakes and uh, try to do spell correction. Uh, so for this field, but we have 28 uh, unique values. With a lot of spelling mistakes, you can see. Uh, and I, I am using uh, this uh, uh, sim spell py, uh, Python uh, library for spell correction. And here, important thing to notice is uh, they have provided a, a dictionary of uh, common English words. So I'm going to use this uh, to find correct spellings. Uh, uh, for this field. And uh, so here we have value and suggestion, and you can see uh, some of the values it was able to uh, map to correct, correct uh, term, but some of them it failed to map to correct uh, term. That's because our, we have used a generic dictionary and uh, this dictionary does not have all the terms uh, that we needed. Uh, 
Uh, therefore, it was not able to map all the values. And uh, for some of the values, uh, it tried to map uh, to other, other terms, but it did a really bad job at it. So uh, to get away from this, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I have uh, exported some of the terms from uh, existing ontologies from Mon Mondo ontology. Uh, I have exported all the terms in that ontology, and I am going to uh, augment my dictionary with uh, that Mondo terms as well. It can be uh, dictionary plus Mondo terms. And after doing that, if I run the same uh, code with new dictionary, we can see. We can see now it's able to uh, map all the values uh, into uh, into correct term because uh, now this field is uh, in our dictionary itself. So then again, I run this block. I use the map function uh, to correct uh, our data set. And also if we check unique values, uh, we can see now we don't have like, 20 or 30 unique values, we have four unique values. And uh, here, here you can see uh, our deficiency. And, and also here also we can see one uh, one item that uh, it has uh, mistakenly identified. That's because this term is also in the dictionary. Uh, so to get away from this, what we can do is uh, we can we can work a little bit more on the dictionary, such as uh, working with word, word probability, uh, two words, uh, probability that the two words happening together. We can do a little bit of tweaking uh, with the dictionary, but uh, I'm not gonna do that now. So last task for today is, now I'm gonna uh, try, so we have uh, these uh, four terms. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use EBI Summa service uh, to map each of these values with an ontology term. So EBI Summa is an ontology annotation tool. Uh, so it's a hosted uh, service, uh, it's online. So I'm gonna use Python request uh, package to make HTTP call to, uh, call to Summa server and they, then uh, get results back to each of these terms. So I have a uh, Summa URI here and also Summa Send you a JSON response uh, with a lot of information on it, such as the semantic tag, ontology, and ontology label, and also about the provenance of that mapping. And I'm selecting only the fields that I want here, and I'm trying to map these values into an ontology. You can see, so here I did not mention any ontology that I want to uh, map. So I asked Suma, uh, just return me any ontology that's best uh, matching uh, for our term. Uh, but if you want, uh, we can also mention ontology, just uh, look at uh, Mondo ontology in these, for these terms. We can also mention that. Uh, but for here, it was able to uh, map uh, these terms to ontology and also this is the ontology label and also uh, how much, uh, how much confidence that Suma can map. And here we can see even this uh, misspelled term, uh, Suma was able to map with a good confidence and it has given us uh, the correct uh, ontology term for that. And if you want to browse these ontologies, uh, you, can, uh, you can go to uh, EBI on, OLS ontology lookup service and uh, check uh, these ontologies and so on. Yeah, uh, so this is, uh, these are some of uh, the basics uh, to explain a normalization method. And also there are uh, many more uh, machine learning and uh, deep learning over the embedding based failing correction method as well. And uh, there are other things what, that we can do such as Punctuation handling and uh, synonym substitution, and we can check word, word orders, and uh, we can uh, treat abbreviation and acronyms, 
and so on. Let me quickly go back uh, to the presentation and uh, quickly talk about uh, some of the work uh, in the Seneca Text Mining Group Inc. So this is part of the text mining pipeline uh, developed uh, by uh, Hesso Saidi team in Seneca. So here, uh, I'm not gonna go into details. Uh, one of the tools you might be interested here is that they have used a UMLS uh, Meta Thesaurus uh, and a dictionary for uh, looking up uh, the many specific words and picking up vocabulary. And also they have used uh, the tool MetaMap uh, for annotating uh, these ontologies or concepts. And after getting these uh, set of ontologies, uh, they have used uh, learning to rank, uh, machine learning model to rank these ontologies and uh, pick the best one uh, from that ontology. So if you are interested, uh, there's a link here for the blog. And also uh, there are other couple of uh, Pipelines uh, developed by one is developed by uh, SFQ team, uh, which is called LexMapper. They have initially uh, built this uh, module uh, to annotate uh, food pathogens in biosamples and uh, then uh, tune this model uh, to use uh, with uh, phenotypic data at Seneca. And also, there's a tool, uh, SOTA, developed by UNCG. Uh, which what they use is uh, they have they use external knowledge of uh, vocabulary and ontologies, and they have a uh, uh, seen a participation index, and also they do uh, engram uh, based uh, word matching and uh, propose uh, codes uh, to the users, and then uh, users can select the uh, best code uh, that matches with the term. Uh, that's it. Uh, thank you very much.